Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to this morning's worship service. And we're in for another hot week. But we praise God for the well, rain that we got this week past. At least we did out in uh, the middle of nowhere. And we're grateful for that. Don Rudd, did you have an announcement to make, please? Actually, a couple of items. First, I'd like to remind everybody about our drive to collect school supplies for needy families. Uh, if you didn't remember to bring anything this week, you have one more week. Uh, next Sunday is the last day to bring things in. and uh, It's a good time to buy. Uh, stores are all having sales, so if you're out shopping, uh, pick up a few extra things and, and drop them in the boxes. We have one out here in the Narthex and one downstairs for your convenience. Let's see if we can fill these boxes up again this year. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about, uh, you may have noticed some uh, changes going on uh, in our uh, church facility. Uh, most notable is the repaving of the parking lot. Uh, also, the uh, replacement of the awnings is, is in process right now. Uh, these are projects that were long overdue but uh, we've postponed them for years because of budgetary constraints. Uh, we were fortunate uh, that uh, Gwen Smith remembered us in her will, so we received a sum of money which is allowing us to do these things, which, which we really needed to do. And uh, I'd like to lift up uh, Garrett Hightink. Uh, Garrett is the <coughs> session chairman of uh, buildings and grounds. Uh, he has uh, given us the benefit of his business experience and considerable amount of his time to identify uh, the right people to do these jobs so that we know we're getting quality work at a fair price. So uh, we thank Garrett for that. And, uh, We will have a, a complete report on this, all these projects uh, probably at the annual meeting so you can see uh, the overall picture of all of this. Thank you. Thank you, Don, and of course thanks, Garrett. And I will say this, there's more to come. We um, uh, received a considerable um, <coughs> gift in memory of Harlan Parmenter, and there was a specific uh, concern with that gift, and we're in the process of uh, figuring out exactly how that's going to play its way out, but I will guarantee you, you will be very, very, very happy with, with that gift. But that's a surprise for now. <laughs> so there's all sorts of exciting things that are going on. <clears throat> we also have a good number of people that are on holiday and going to be going on holiday. I think Suhail's done in Brazil, is that correct, on a business, not, not Brazil, Indiana, <laughs> Brazil, South America, <clears throat> on a business trip, <clears throat> and then uh, all sorts of things are happening. So, excited about that. Sammy is our liturgist today, and we're excited to have him back in the pulpit with us, and uh, really looking forward to Claudia and her turn in the pulpit by the end of the summer. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> Are there any other announcements that need to be made at this time? Well, it's good that you're here. I want to remind everybody what is obvious, but that is some people, for health reasons, the triple digits, uh, you know, the triple digit heat really, really hurts people. So if you have friends or relatives, uh, you might want to make sure that you check up on them and uh, make sure that they're not left alone at home if they're air conditioning or something. They're up. This is obvious, but we need to be really mindful of this. All right, then let's begin our worship with silence. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. God is here. Let us worship him. Almighty God, 
We pray for your blessing on the church in this place. Here may the faithful find salvation and the careless be awakened. Here may the doubting find faith and the anxious be encouraged. Here may the tempted find help and the sorrowful comfort. Here may the weary find rest and the strong be renewed. Here may the aged find consolation and the young be inspired. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The opening hymn is number 339. Please stand if you are able. to himself through Christ. For our sake he has made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Amen. All right. Do we have any children? Jesus loves the children. <laughs> I, I'm serious. I go on. I would go on Thanksgiving. You know, go there early in the morning. You get back around five or six, then you have your turkey and stuff. And you can go on a ride all day long. And no, it was really a lot of fun. So, what I want you to do is this: 
you know what Thanksgiving is? Yeah. Okay, why don't you go home today and see your dad and say, Dad, I've got a great idea for Thanksgiving, okay? No, no, listen to me. Don't roll your eyes. <laughs> and wonder what you do then. You say, Dad, I talked to Pastor David. He said that what he wants you to do is to take you to Disneyland on Thanksgiving, okay? Uh, but he won't do it. <laughs> He won't do it. Doesn't he love you? <laughs> I'll, I'll go for the tickets. All right. Hey, what have you been doing this summer? Have you been doing anything this summer? You're going to the Bryant Park pool. Has that been fun? Yeah? Do they have sharks in the water there? Do they have... You know what they do have? They have flesh-eating... Uh, <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> and what? Oh, would you go down the slide? Is it a water slide? Is it fun? You're funny? So what have you been doing this summer? Have you been doing anything this summer? No? Have you been doing anything this summer? No. What have you done this summer? Any fun? I mean, you might have a miserable life. You didn't know. That. Are you having fun this summer? How about you? Have you had fun this summer? What was fun for you? Video. Video games? Oh, no. Oh, don't get me started. <laughs> Your parents let you watch video games? Oh, yeah. play. Oh, play and play. <laughs> you should be outside having fun. It's a sad world. <laughs> All right. Didn't he? What? He had fun Thursday night. Did you have fun Thursday night? What did you do Thursday night? Oh, I was going to ask you about the, <laughs> the play. What play? Oh, how many people went to the play Thursday night? That's exactly right. All oh, those that didn't go missed out on a lot of fun. And uh, we had one person who couldn't behave and was told to get out. And it wasn't me this time. <laughs> remember that? Tell that person that I'm talking about one of the Haddads. I won't remember who it was. Not me. We, we, had great, we had a great time. Yeah, that was fun, wasn't it? Did you like throwing the tomatoes? I did too. I mean, I, yeah, I supervised that. Okay. <laughs> Well, who do you suppose gave us summer? God. God. And why did God give us summer? What happens in the summer? Uh, fun stuff happens. Fun stuff happens. And what's some of the fun stuff? Uh, like, uh, going to Disneyland. Going to Disneyland <laughs> and swimming. What else? Uh, going down the water slide. Going down the water slide. And God gave us all of that because he wants us to be sad, right? <laughs> <laughs> Happy. Huh? You're right. God wants us to be happy. And that's one of the reasons why God gave us summers. And since the, you know, when you get a little older, it's to play baseball. And it's just to have a little fun. It's also a time when we grow things. And so God made it so during the summer, things can grow so that in the winter, what can happen? Uh, Dead wood. What? <laughs> no. So we can eat, right? Yeah. Okay. One more thing exciting that happened is I got an inside. You got a new what? Fan yesterday. F A N. A fan. You mean like this fan? Yeah, yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> is it an electric fan or does he have to? Is it all that? <laughs> <laughs> you got boy, it's easy to please if you get you get one of those. <laughs> yeah. You know, we got one of those at the funeral home one in the back if you want. That make you happy. <laughs> and I got a fan. That's lovely. <laughs> Good. Do you have an air conditioner in your house? Yeah. You do. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble. Okay. All right. Uh, what's the song we're singing? Uh, open our eyes. Number two in the song. Number two of the song, but the number one in your heart. Open our eyes. <laughs>
had this competition and, and who could read the most. And so that's what we did during the summer. I mean, you know, when it would rain or something like that. We didn't watch TV or anything, and but we were forbidden that. And so uh, we'd read. It was just great fun. And then we'd share what we had read. And uh, I don't know if people do that anymore. I guess they do more important things like play with video games. Yeah. <laughs> do you read? Yes, I want to say something that the children can go online and do reading during the summer. Good. So they might say they're on television. Oh, I see. But they are incorporating reading. I know. And <laughs> it's, it's really being filtered down, and literacy is getting better. Good. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Don't believe me. <laughs> Nancy, I believe everything you say. <laughs> I, you know, I do know this, that the, the children uh, in, in 20 years when they become adults, this is, this is how they're going to walk. <laughs> I'm not making fun of that either. It's true. You ever watch them walk on campus? It is true, isn't it? Oh, yes. I know. <laughs> and it's just like when you make fun of people, your eye, your face is going to say that way if you make it. That's what's going to happen to their necks. It's a prophecy. <laughs> uh, concerns of the Church Universal. Hilda's on the mend. Uh, Phyllis is on the mend. And uh, hopefully both will be back within a, a few weeks, we would hope so. Um, Kathleen, how's she doing? Colleen, same? Or? Good, good. And she was able to go and help her daughter get a dress, is that correct? Well, I took her to Tennessee for, for the four days for the fitting. It was very, very difficult for her, but she was very happy to be there for her daughter, and I was very happy to do it. And good. she's looking forward to the wedding, and that gives her a boost. And so. well. um, she has a very good appointment coming up with the neurologist. And Bill Schofield's uh, sister-in-law passed away, and we need to be mindful of that. Are there any other concerns here that we have this morning? Yes? Um, just for my mother who had a fall, she's okay, and is recuperating fine. She didn't break anything, but she's sort of... What's her first name? Janet. Janet. How's your sister Anna doing? She is doing great. She is fine. Everything's Good. looking very good. Um, within the last couple of weeks, the people of Henryville got hit by another storm. So they have more down trees and are going to need additional help down there. Okay. My younger brother was flying in yesterday from uh, Chicago to St. Louis, and the airplane had a Mechanical failure. They had uh, power 
you know, shut up and you had to emerge the landing. Mm. Oh. Lost control of the air a little bit, blew a tire, but they did fine. So thank to God that they were <laughs> good made night. it safe and sound with him and his family. This is La Fatty's brother was flying from Chicago to St. Louis. They had mechanical failure. They tried to land. The tire blew out. They had quite an experience. And the family. And the family, but everybody's fine. That's it. Yes, Alan. Thanks. Well, my cousin Diane for health and home issues. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> Travel mercies, of course, for Swale and all. Let us turn our attention to prayer. Gracious and heavenly God, by your kindness you have assembled us here this morning. And by your generosity you have brought us together to be about the purpose of loving you and, and in loving you, demonstrating that by loving each other. Praying for each other. Lifting each other up. Forgiving each other. All of that which comes from Christ Jesus. <laughs> and for all of that, we're thankful. We're mindful that this, this world is not perfect. We're mindful that there are flaws not in, your, not in your plans, but there are flaws in the thinking of human beings. And so we find there are deaths that are incomprehensible that have taken place this week. The good people in Colorado, once again, have been visited by tragedy. Our own community with a parent, crazy, harming children, harming a child. And it goes on and on, and wars, and rumors of wars, and <coughs> insanities. And yet, in spite of all that, you were there, and you were with us, and you, at least, are constant, and you are sane, and you are the rock of ages that we can rest in. And so we come to you uh, this Sunday resting in you. And though, as the psalmist sings, the uh, mountains may shake, and the waters may roar and things would tumble into the sea all around us and the foundations rattle. You are our strength and our shield, a very present hope in times of trouble. And so we rest in you, you who are our rock. And resting in our rock, <coughs> we are confident when we lift up our prayers of adoration and prayers of concern and prayers of healing, prayers of thanksgiving. We give thee thanks for your seeing Rachel's mother, Janan, abide with her in her older years and see that she have good health. We give thee thanks that you have continued to be with Anna and uh, as she is recovering from cancer. I'm grateful that you have seen Labib and his family safe from their harrowing experience on the plane. Ask that you be with Mr. Pease's cousin Diane and the concerns that she has. And as always that you be with Kathleen as she um, wrestles faithfully, diligently with MS we ask that you abide with her and her husband, Jim, and see them through this ordeal. And would it be your will that you would give Kathleen a measure of uh, relief and, and words of encouragement and hope that she might enjoy completely um, the wedding of her daughter? We ask always that you be with her mother, Kathleen, May you be with Kathleen's mother, Colleen, and that you always abide with Colleen and her beloved as well. Gracious and heavenly God, for the good people in Henryville, be with them. Let them be not afraid. 
but rather take this as yet again another opportunity not to complain, but rather as an opportunity to get to work. And we lift up the congregations there and the good Presbyterians who have accomplished so much in that small corner of your world. We ask that you abide with each and every one of us, and we ask that you listen to this, our prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We continue now the sharing of our tithes and our offerings. in the Pew Bible and 1024 in the large print. Wisdom is meaningless. I, the teacher, was king over Israel and Jerusalem. I devoted myself to study and to explore by wisdom all that is done under heaven. What a heavy burden God has laid on men. I have seen all the things that are done under the sun. All of them are meaningless, a chasing after the wind. What is twisted cannot be straightened. What is lacking cannot be counted. I thought to myself, look, I have grown and increased in wisdom more than anyone who has ruled over Jerusalem before me. I have experienced much wisdom and knowledge. Then I applied myself to the understanding of wisdom and also the madness and folly. But I learned that this too is a chasing after the wind. For with much wisdom comes much sorrow. The more knowledge, the more grief. Wisdom and folly are meaningless. Then I turned my thoughts to consider wisdom and also the madness and also madness and folly. What more can the king's successor do than what has already been done? I saw that wisdom is better than folly, just as light is better than darkness. The wise man has eyes in his head, while the fool walks in the darkness. But I came to realize that the same fate overtakes them both. Then I thought in my heart, 
The fate of the fool will overtake me also. What then do I gain by being wise? I said in my heart, this too is meaningless. For the wise man, like the fool, will not be long remembered. In days to come, both will be forgotten. Like the fool, the wise man too must die. A common destiny for all. So I reflected on all this and concluded that the righteous and the wise and what they do are in God's hand. But no man knows whether love or hate awaits him. All share a common destiny, the righteous and the wicked, the good and the bad, the clean and the unclean, those who offer sacrifices and those who do not. As it is with the good man, so with the sinner. As it is with those who take oaths, so with those who are afraid to take them. This is the evil in everything that happens under the sun. The same destiny overtakes all. The hearts of men, moreover, are full of evil, and there is madness in their hearts while they live, and afterward they join the dead. Anyone who is among the living has hope. Even a live dog is better off than a dead lion. For the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing. They have no further reward, and even the memory of them is forgotten. Their love, their hate, and their jealousy have long since vanished. Never again will they have a part in anything that happens under the sun. Go, eat your food with gladness, and drink your wine with a joyful heart, for it is now that God favors what you do. Always be clothed in white, and always anoint your head with oil. Enjoy life with your wife, whom you love, all the days of this meaningless life that God has given you under the sun. All your meaningless days. For this is your lot in life, and in your toilsome labor under the sun. Whatever your hand finds to do, do with it with all your might. For in the grave, where you are going, there is neither working, nor planning, nor knowledge, nor wisdom. I have seen something else under the sun. The race is not to the swift, or the battle to the strong, nor does the food come to the wise, or wealth to the brilliant, or favor to the learned, but time and chance happen to them all. Moreover, no man knows when his hour will come. All fish are caught in a cruel net, or birds are taken in a snare, so men are trapped by evil times that fall unexpectedly upon them. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. <clears throat> well, if someone said to me after my meditation on uh, Lamentations, well, never mind what they said to me. It's like this, oh dear. <laughs> Most of us grew up with, uh, uh, instead of meaningless, it was what, vanity, remember? Mm -hmm. Vanity, vanity, all is vanity. That's what we grew up with. And uh, Interestingly enough, those of you who um, like Ernest Hemingway, uh, his book, The Sun Also Rises, takes its uh, title from the, uh, what is it? Verse 6 in the first chapter, the sun also rises, something like that. Well, this reading is in the Bible. There was some argument whether or not to permit it to be in the Bible, the Old Testament, uh, because a lot of people think that it's pretty pessimistic. Your meaningless lives. Meaningless lives. So I want to talk about Ecclesiastes, and incidentally, before I forget, and Mr. Pease will remind me, uh, next Sunday will be uh, the sermon will be on the Song uh, Songs of Solomon. So uh, the Song of Songs, rather, the Song of Songs. So that'll be kind of fun to do that. Anyway, the word Ecclesiastes. Uh, you know, in the Greek we get the word ecclesiastical. Huh? Ecclesia means assembly or congregation. Um, and apparently in this context, it refers to someone who uh, speaks to the assembly or speaks to those people who are gathered. 
And it must be some kind of a wise person. Traditionally, this function has been attributed to King Solomon about the year 900 BC. Uh, and that's a, some people think that he wrote it. Uh, and I'm not so sure about that, but that really doesn't matter. What I am fairly confident about is that this book is a sober, um, but decidedly not cynical observation of life. Uh, it, it is, and that's really important. This is not a. This is not cynicism here. Its purpose, I think, could be summed up um, in the lines, L-I-N-E-S, not lions, lines, uh, from a song written some 40 years ago, and one that I've always wanted to put out on my desk, but never got to do it because it cost $40 to have it made, and I was too tight. But uh, some of you would know this song, but it goes like this, the line. The one, the one who made kittens put snakes in the grass. The one who made kittens put snakes in the grass. And I've always said this to people who are serious about maturing in Christ. I said, once you figure that out, then you can begin to have a happy life. Once you begin to understand that, then you can begin to have a happy life because you won't be in fantasy land, you will be in realville. And I've always contended that farmers and kids of farmers have a much better understanding of what life is all about you know, than people who live in the city. But that's another observation that I've made. The one who made, the one who made kittens put snakes in the grass. And you'll notice uh, this short phrase affirms God. The one is God. God made the kittens. God made the snakes. And it also credits to God the way life is. Frankly, if you get on get frankly, if you are going to get on an airplane and fly, there's a thing called gravity. God made the gravity. And sometimes airplanes don't make it down the way they're supposed to. Is that God's fault? God does not, for example, direct the snake to eat the kitty cat. But when that happens, that's just the way life is. <clears throat> People have a difficult time with that. I don't. Ecclesiastical, Ecclesiastes, some scholars have argued, is a thoughtful response to the so-called wisdom movement uh, in ancient Israel. And this movement, or this school of thought, this way of perceiving reality, um, we, we talked about it about three weeks ago when, when we did that very brief study on Proverbs. And it was stated that if one the movement, the wisdom movement, goes something like this, that if one wants to know who God is, and in turn uh, to know the meaning and purpose of life, one has to become wise. Okay? In other words, you have to, you have to, yeah, you have to become wise. And wise men and women have a better appreciation and a deeper understanding of the reality and the, the mind, if you will, of God than those of, um, of, mm, of lesser uh, achievement when it comes to uh, um, uh, their minds. Anyway, as I pointed out some time ago <clears throat> in Proverbs, this is how um, the writer put it, and I think it's uh, worth, worth reviewing. This is in Proverbs uh, 3, and I'm going to pick it up in, in verse 13, I think. Blessed is the man who finds wisdom, the man who gains understanding. All right. For she, that is wisdom, is more profitable than silver and yields better returns than gold. She is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand and in her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant ways and all her paths are peace. 
She is a tree of life to those who embrace her and who lay hold of her will be blessed. And so it was by wisdom the Lord laid the earth foundations and by understanding he set the heavens in place. And this you might be interested in as well. This is chapter 4. We'll pick it up in verse 7, I think. <clears throat> wisdom is supreme. Therefore, get wisdom. Though it cost all you have, get understanding. Esteem her wisdom, and she will exalt you. Embrace her, and she will honor you. She will set a garland of grace on your head and present you with a crown of splendor. Listen, my son, accept what I say, and the years of your life will be many. I guide you in the way of wisdom. So the idea <clears throat> among, among the ancient Israelites was if you become wise, and in particular they're talking about the wisdom of God, uh, that somehow you can get to know who God is, and once you get to know who God is, then you'll lead a godly life, and you'll you know, have, I don't know, some wealth, you'll have good health, You'll have longevity, um, you'll have peace, and everything will be just fine. <clears throat> and that uh, is for people who, who become wise, and by that I mean become wise in who God is. However, true that may be, I don't think it is, uh, and the writer of Ecclesiastes doesn't think it is either, and so he says this. Then I turn my thoughts to consider wisdom. Also madness and folly. What more can a king's successor do than what has already been done? I saw that wisdom is better than folly. Just as light is better than darkness. <clears throat> the wise man has eyes in his head while the fool walks in darkness. Okay, so he's acknowledging, yeah, the, the wise know a little bit more than the fools, the uneducated people who, who, who are not wise. And then the writer of Ecclesiastes says this, even that's the truth, I came to realize that the same fate overcomes each of them. And I thought in my heart, the fate of the fool will overtake me also. What then do I gain by being wise? So the suggestion is, is that part of what's happening here in Ecclesiastes is that it's a response to this wisdom movement and it's trying to tell the people maybe that's not the way to do it. Maybe, maybe that's wrong. To be sure, God knows all, sees all, understands all. God is all wise. Yet for we, we mere mortals, to even begin to fathom God, well, that is meaninglessness. That is vanity. That is foolishness. You can't do it. In fact, there is little sense in human existence. Because what you think should be cause and effect um, turns out to be nuts. A recent horrific example is the stupefying actions of this person in Aurora, Colorado. How do you account for that? Now, if we say God will take care of you if you say your prayers, and God will take care of you if you honor your vows, and God will take care of you, you know, if you're pious, and God will take care of you, all this stuff, but you better not go to a, uh, so I guess that means what? That all those people that took a bullet in the head uh, were not good, devout, thoughtful people? Well, of course not. Well, maybe they, maybe they deserved it. Maybe that was God's plan to kill those people. Well, not my God, but maybe other people's God. That's not my God. But how do you account for that? Some nutcase goes in there, rat-a-tat-tat-tat, -tat -tat, doesn't care, and it's going to just slaughters all these people. Yeah, so much for wisdom. Yeah, so if you become wise, the writer is saying, then you're going to live a life of peace. So I guess all these people were stupid idiots. 
And of course they weren't. Or what do we do with this mind-numbing behavior of the woman uh, who beat to death the child this last week in this safe and secure, beautiful Eden in Indiana called Bloomington? How do, how do you figure that? How, how do you figure that? What, the baby was a sinner and deserved to be beaten to death? Is that what it was? So the writer of Ecclesiastes would say, this is, this is meaninglessness. Don't tell me there's purpose and meaning in life. All this is vanity, the, the, old, the old word. It's all vanity. Vanity, vanity, vanity. Life is meaningless. There is no cause and effect. This is just nuts out there. Or, <clears throat> the foolishness of those uh, who leave their children in cars during heat waves. Well, obviously they're not wise, but what? Were the children evil? I, well, answer me. No. <laughs> they deserve that? No. Well, of course they didn't deserve it. It's all meaningless. These were innocent children, and they're dead children. I have a clergy friend of mine whose mother, this is kind of funny, but not funny. I have a clergy friend of mine whose mother <clears throat> is not only an avowed, but an active atheist. <laughs> and, and so when tragedy arrives, he calls her uh, son, and in a snarky little voice says, well, son, how's your God doing today? <laughs> that's what she does how's your God doing or I saw what your God did today no that said the writer of Ecclesiastes is not an atheist not sarcastic not cynical only an observer of what uh, it really means to be human and it is in the New Testament that the rain falls on the just as well as the unjust whether you like it or not. So that's what people don't understand. I was turning on, and I, 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 I saw this guy, and I, man, he had his Bible out, and he had, he told me, he told me, based on Scripture, based on God's Holy Word, how to make money. How to be successful. And all I did to do, all I had to do, was to give a tithe, which I do anyway. But uh, but not only that, I got to give him money as well, so that he'll pray for me, so I'll be really successful. But I'm a wise man and not a fool. Rain falls on the just as well as the unjust. You can tithe and you can still get cancer. You can pray and your child can still die. You can be chaste and devout and moral and happy and decent and honorable and your spouse leave you. It's meaninglessness. Life is insane. Now, life, life is meaningless, the writer of Ecclesiastes would say. And he's saying, if you think it's anything other than that, you're crazy. You're crazy. The writer also knows that we do not know the mind of God. <clears throat> he knows that for many, if not most, on this playing field called life, things will not always uh, go the way you want them to, and things will not always work out for the better. Things, you know, when you go in, oh, things are going to get better, honey. No, they're not. <laughs> no, they're not. They're going to get worse. Think not how you enjoy your golden years. I'm enjoying mine with arthritis now, and this, and then losing my hearing. It's just great. <laughs> Haven't lost my sense of humor, though, huh? But, but be that as it may, uh, the, the life, 
Life happens. And, and life happens and it has nothing to do with how devout you, devout you are, how honorable you are, how seriously you pray, how chaste you are. None of that matters. There is no rhyme. There is no reason. It happens. According to the writer of Ecclesiastes. And I happen to agree with him on virtually all of this. I happen to agree with him on that. And that's not based on cynicism. That's based... I've, I've, I've watched... I've observed, and I've seen how the honorable are abused, and I've seen how the wicked have prospered. I've seen what Wall Street has done to our country. I've seen what the politicians have done for our country, and we still vote for them, and we want to say that this is meaningful? We still vote for these criminals? And we want to say that life makes sense in the United States? Instead of going to Wall Street and throwing all those bums out and putting them in jail for 50 years, we give them their salaries back. And no wonder the poor people hate us. And you want to tell me there's meaning in life? We live in the most wonderful country in the world and we've turned our rivers into urinals? We've turned our lakes into toilets? We've turned our skies into gray crap. I know, it's because we're smart and we're wise. No, we're ignorant. And we deserve everything we get. And the writer of Ecclesiastes knows that. He knows that. And so he's going to say, no, nah, no, don't come to me and talk about hope and change. Because there's no hope and there's not going to be any change except for the worse. And that's not a comment on the Democrats. That's a comment on all the crooks. They're all crooks. They're all crooks. And they're all evil. E-V-I-L. Oh, not, no, they're not. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. So the writer would go, meaningless, meaningless is vanity, vanity, vanity. You vote for these people and you do this and you're crazy. They're not going to change. They're going to take your money. They're going to lie to you. They're going to steal from you. They're going to do everything possible. And then they're going to turn around and blame you that it's your fault. <clears throat> now, that, that's a political example. People say, well, you're being unkind. Even, well, I'm not being unkind because I saw what the last two presidents have done to my bank account. They stole from me so that their buddies could get wealthy. I'm talking about two presidents, the last two. Anyway, vanity, vanity, vanity. It's not going to get better. Quit your whining, so you better live life. All right. <clears throat> now, that said, it must be stated that the writer of Ecclesiastes was not a Christian. But I am, and so are you. And this praise be to Jesus Christ is exactly why we do not despair. This is why I do not despair. And no, my tirade against the political powers and the people in authority, I don't like them, I don't respect them, I can't wait for them to die. <laughs> I'm serious. All they do is cause problems that hurt people. That's all they do is hurt people. No, oh, no, I'm looking forward to that. Get rid of them. But we do not despair, even though we see this insanity going on, even though we see what went on in Aurora, even though that we see this nutty woman that kills a baby, blah, 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 goes on and on. We do not despair, we who are Christians. We do not despair uh, because on this curious, dangerous, and exhilarating journey called life, there is one who walks with us. There is one who has not abandoned us. There is one who takes our hand and lifts us up and dusts us off and points us in the correct direction. There is one who uh, is hope-filled. There is one who is, in, in fact, the embodiment of hope. 
There is one who provides comfort when we uh, are diseased. There is one who walks with us when our hearts have been broken. There is one who lifts us up when we're filled with despair. There is one that I call Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, who is with us. And I have no despair because I walk with Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the one who shows us the way. A way not in a good health. Nobody guaranteed that. Uh, a way not into possessions. Nobody's <laughs> guaranteed that by God. N uh, a way not into power or privilege. Nobody's guaranteed that by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ doesn't say, I'm getting on the cross so that you can become prosperous. Jesus uh, is saying, I'm going to show you a way by virtue of the cross, by virtue of my suffering, by virtue of my affection for you, by virtue of my love for you, that you do not have to despair because I'm going to walk with you in this wonderful screwball journey <coughs> called life. It's not fair. It's oftentimes ugly. It's messy. It's dark. It's explosive. It is absolutely perfect. It's wonderful. Because of this, we do not despair, but we rejoice soberly in the wisdom of knowing Christ is with us. In the wisdom of knowing that Christ has gone before us. In the wisdom of knowing that Christ will never abandon us. Jesus, remember, does not fix things. A Jesus that fixes things is a 12-year-old Jesus. When you grow up, you realize Jesus doesn't fix you. Jesus walks with you. Jesus walks with us as we, to use Paul's lovely phrase in Hebrews 12, um, he encourages us to fix our eyes on Jesus. Not have Jesus fix us, but fix our eyes on Jesus Christ and run with perseverance the race that has been set before us, all the time turning to Jesus Christ, who is the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. That's what we're supposed to be about in life. Running the race with perseverance, running the race with honor, running the weight race as Jesus is with us, running the race. And you get in that lane and you run the race and that's when the fun begins. And it's a beautiful life. It is a beautiful, beautiful life. It's the only one we have. Enjoy. Amen. <laughs> You'll notice in our closing hymn, a uh, great hymn by Martin Luther, there's the one... Um, verse, I'm like an ever-rolling stream bears all its souls away. And I want you to focus on that because that too comes from Ecclesiastes. Please stay. <laughs>
good day to live an authentic life. This is a good day to worship and adore Thee. This is a good day to follow Jesus. This is a good day to be alive. This is the day that the Lord made. And so we will rejoice and be glad in it. All of it. May the blessings of Christ Jesus, who in fact is Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Thank you.